kindness you have for our grace you brought me out of darkness you have filled me with peace give her mercy oh my Sing this out, faithful. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises, all your promises are yes and amen. Sing it again. All your promises are yes and amen. Hey. All your promises. Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes. You have broken every curse.
Yes, they are, Lord. One last team, let's sing. I will rest. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is a faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is a faithfulness.
If you got your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 61. Uh, everyone is, the title of this is uh, anointing. And uh, everyone in here at some point, and usually, and I remember it as a little kid uh, growing up in, in, a, in, a, in a Baptist church and thinking, who's right? You know, you start going to school and you got Catholics and mama was a Catholic, daddy was a Baptist, so I guess that made me a Captist and there's Methodists and Church of Christ and, you know, Mormons and Jehovah's Witness. And I remember as a kid thinking, who's right? Has anybody ever thought that? I mean, besides me, I mean, you know, and so uh, I, I just remember that thought and, uh, you know, and then later on in life, you know, Jesus simply said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's about as simple as you can make this. But a lot of times what we do is we get outside that realm, and then that's when we can start getting off course. Come on, y'all hearing what I'm saying? And, and so we, we, in our trying to find God and do things, sometimes we can deviate from the blood plus nothing. Does that make sense? And, uh, and the thing about it is, is right now we are in a course correction. And that's never easy. Uh, it's not an easy task because nobody likes change and nobody likes to be told they you know, kind of been going the wrong direction. You know, we, we, we have a hard time with all that, even though the evidence is all around us that this thing is, we're trying to saddle a dead horse here, you know. And uh, there's, you know, it's just all around us. And so this course correction is tough. And what we're doing is, is we're coming back to Jesus. We're coming back to God and we're coming and it's not a, a matter of we're just coming to get, get, get. And, and we, we, we get in our consumer mentality, we got to where we're, we're going to church to get. And, uh, and yes, we got to come and learn, but there's also God that we need to minister to. We are the kings and priests that come into the house, and, and we've been anointed to be able to, do the purposes, fulfill the purposes of God. And so there, there is a task that every body of believers, there is a purpose for every body of believers uh, to fulfill that it's God's purpose and we've been anointed to do that. So we're going to look at some things in this because I think a lot of times deception can come in in our denominations and we get busy doing stuff. And, and, and we get busy sorting out, you know, the things that each little denomination believes in. And it, it y'all know what I'm talking about. And it, it sometimes it just sets us back and, and we, we get used to the master pastor thing and, and we just are stuck. And, and we're not fulfilling the purpose that God put us here to fulfill. And so... The thing about it is deceived people don't know they're deceived. And deception has, it is, it's, deception is like a veil that the enemy puts over us to not see. We're doing all these good things for God. We're just not doing them with him. Does that make more sense? And so uh, Jesus shows up and he pulls, he shows up as the light in a dark world and he just rips the veil off of our eyes 
to see clearly what's going on. He shows up in Isaiah, and he shows up, and he, and he, here's what he says that's in Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and freedom to prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he, here's what's so amazing is that when he shows up, he's coming out of the wilderness. He's coming out of trials. He's coming out and, he's, and he walks into the synagogue and he asks for the book of Isaiah, the scroll of Isaiah and he gets the scroll, he goes right here, and he begins to read what was prophesied some 700 years before he even showed up. And he begins to read the prophecy that it's fulfilled and that I am anointed. And it, it's... And when you break that down, the whole mandate is right there. Because what he said is there's no more chains. There's no more cell with bars that we, that limit. This is what got me. When you break down what he said and what was prophesied, he says now there's no more limits on what you can go and do. And then he says... To those who are, he said, captives and freedom to those in prison. In other words, those who've been held in chains, and come on, and then those who need to be pardoned. See, we've been pardoned from all the past guilt and sin that we walked in. That's huge. And that's the number one thing the devil always throws in our face is the, the things that we did in the past when we've been pardoned from them. Come on, that's good news, right? That's the gospel. That's the good news, that we're not in a cell no more with bars that limit us. And our broken hearts have been mended. And we've been pardoned. It don't get no better than that. And the enemy's always trying to hold us down to limit our movement so that we don't fulfill. Come on. Luke 9. Look in Luke 9. We're going to lay a little bit of. We're going to connect a few dots. Luke 9, verse 1. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. Now, here's what he said. And here's what got me. It says, he called the 12 together and gave them the power and authority. He comes out of the wilderness. Look at this. Look at this. He comes out of the wilderness. He goes to the synagogue and he says, this scripture has been fulfilled the anointing is on me. In other words, he begins to peel back the layer of the veil that has hold, held us captive, the sin that has held us captive. See, not only does the devil afflict us spiritually, but he also afflicts us physically. And Jesus shows up and he says, I've taken care of both of these things. Come on, let that sink in just a minute.
because there's a lot of things we're walking around dealing with. We've got the authority and the power over it. Listen, Jesus said, I send you out. Come on, let that sink in just a minute. Listen, he never changes. He's always wanted us. What did he tell us in Exodus 23:30? He said, I will not drive the enemy out before you in a single year so that the beasts of the field will not become too numerous for you, but that little by little so that you will be able to take possession and bear fruit. He wants us to be able to possess the land and bear fruit. And the only way we can do that is if we are walking in the power and authority that he gave us. And for doggone too long, we've debated whether or not the, even, the Holy Spirit even talks to us. When the Holy Spirit is the one leading us and guiding us into victory of the promises of God. The promises of God are yes and amen. wrong. The promises of God are yes and our amen. Come on. See, we've done that for years in churches. The promises of God are yes and amen, but we don't read it. It's our amen. It's our agreeing with it. It's us walking in authority. Come on. It's us walking in the power and authority, and we're still debating whether or not uh, the power left with, with the 12 guys. How can we fulfill the mandate of the gospel of God if we think all that stuff is gone? Are you, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? See, there's things we struggle with that's just simple little things, and we won't take authority over it. Listen, you don't have to believe in spiritual warfare. It doesn't matter to me or not, but just keep getting beat up. See, we're in a spiritual warfare whether you like, to, like it or not. We're in it. And we can't ignore the spiritual realm and think it's just going to go away. We can't. See, we've got to start bombarding. See, you have the authority to tell the devil to take a hike. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he came and hung on that cross and purchased that power for us to walk in so we could fulfill the mandate and the purposes of God. And that's what the anointing is for. The anointing of God is for the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. That when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, then we're anointed to be able to do that. Come on. Think for just a second the confusion in the devil's camp when Jesus sent them out. That, 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 you, you know, it, those demons were like, whoa, wait, whoa, we've done set up strongholds here. We, we've been setting up strongholds, all the bells. All those Baal gods, all those, uh, I mean, they were killing babies a long, long time ago. They, they were having orgies a long time ago. They were, come on, are y'all hearing me? There was perversions a long time ago, and all these gods, all the Greek gods, the Zeuses, the Apollos, the, all them gods, the, the, that was spirits that had strongholds in those areas. And those people serve those gods. And now all of a sudden, listen, those gods, they impacted not only just people, communities, cultures, countries. I mean, they, look at Germany in the World War II. People, that was a spirit. There was a spirit possessing Hitler. Oh, hey, I don't. <laughs> and these spirits have to be dealt with through this word. Come on. 
And so he, here's all these spirits that had these strongholds, and Jesus shows up, says, the Spirit of the Lord is in, uh, on me, and he has anointed me to bring good news. Good news of what? That these spirits are now going to be dealt with. That now you, you, that's what's so powerful. He sent them. They were going out, and they were laying hands on the afflicted. They were going out and binding up the brokenhearted. They were going out proclaiming. Come on. They were proclaiming God's rule, God's dominion. Come on. Is now the new sheriff in town. For way too many years now, we've never understood the spiritual impact. What took place that day to get us out of bondage, to get us away and out of the guilt of sin. See, not only have we been set free and pardoned, but we've been given authority. See, Jesus sent them out. But he didn't just send them out without power and authority and gifts and anointing. And here's what I want to get to. See, the mandate that Christ Jesus is the way has never changed. But what's being corrected in our time is the fact that there is a huge difference in gifts and anointing. And, the, and we've almost, in our culture, have blended those words to mean the same thing. And they are not. Praise God for the charismatic movement. Praise God. But what happened was, the, even in the charismatic, where they get off course, is they, the gifts moved into emotion and feeling. Come on, into the height. Listen, <clears throat> I, I, I always want to be real clear around here because we want to do things excellent. We want our praise and worship to be excellent. We want things done excellent to honor God, right? We're not here to entertain you. The, that's not what we're here. And the one thing we've always said around here, and listen, and, and I know I repeat myself, but it, well, I've got to repeat myself because I want it to be clear. We're not here to entertain you. And one thing we've always said over and over is we don't lead worship, we follow it. There's a huge difference. And the reason we follow worship is because these guys right here, they've come for an audience of one. They're here to touch God's heart. Now, if you want to join in on that journey, come on. If you just want to be entertained, that's fine. And at some point, hopefully, you'll want to come and reach. Come on, you hear what I'm saying? Reach out and touch God and honor Him and tell Him how worthy He is and minister to Him. And come on, do y'all see what I'm saying? And in the midst of that, the anointing of God begins to move and it begins to break the yokes and it begins... People begin to get set free. People begin to get healed because the anointing of God begins to move. And that's why it's so important as a congregation, if you're a spiritual, if you've been in church at any amount of time, you shouldn't just be coming to get. You should be coming to give because you never know what that person sitting next to you needs. They may need you to be worshiping. But I get sick and tired of hearing, oh, I just ain't getting it. No, you should be teaching something. See, we've had this consumer mentality, and, we've, and we have confused gifts. and Listen, there's a lot of gifted speakers. There's a lot of gifted musicians. But there's few anointed ones. Come on, do y'all hear what I'm saying? 
And so to walk in the anointing, it's got to be where you're coming and you're trying to touch God's heart. See, the anointing is what's got to be corrected in the body. See, we've got plenty of gifted speakers, plenty of gifted musicians, but we need as a body to all walk in the anointing of God to fulfill the purpose of God. That gifts function without God. Your gift will work. You can serve the devil with your gift. The gifts and calling are without repentance. They are on your life. They were, listen, they were in your life before you had life. You were born with gifts. Psalms 139, David said, You ordained my days before yet there was one of them. But you have a thief that's always trying to pervert that gift. Always. It doesn't matter what you do. He's always trying to pervert that gift. Listen, your gifts are not just to sing and preach. You're going to preach on your job, even not even say a word. Your gift will work everywhere. But you need the anointing of God on that gift. It's like handing somebody a pair of channel locks that don't know how to use them. Right? Hey, you don't even know which way to turn. Hey, I can't, I don't understand why I won't buy it. Well, you got them on backwards. Come on. See, that, it's like, that's what it's like. You got this gift but you don't have the power and authority to make it work to fulfill the purpose that God has. Does that make sense? See, the, par the, the charismatic movement was great to bring awareness to the work of the Holy Spirit. It was great. But the problem is, is we've gotten real good at living on the mountaintop, but we ain't got good at living in the valley where things grow. We like the hype and we like all that, but as soon as we get down in the valley, or as soon as we feel like we're out, come on, we have a hard time with that. And too many times, God wants us down there where we can grow and mature. And that's why the body of Christ hasn't matured. It's because we haven't been able, come on, to sit, be taught, to grow, to learn why we have our gifts, to learn what God's going to do with us. He's going to work with us on our jobs, in our schools, in our communities, in the cafe, in the grocery store. Come on. Listen. You, your gift is always with you and the anointing will be with you everywhere you go. In the grocery store. Listen, that's where God wants you anointed is out there, not just in the church. See, we have to get a firm grasp on what's anointed and what's gifted. The anointing, here's what it means. To authorize or set apart a person for a particular work or service. That's what it means. To authorize or set apart a person for a particular work or service. Everyone in here has a particular skill set. Every person in here has, has different jobs in here. And you've been the anointing will come on that for you to fulfill God's purpose right where you're at. Come on, does that make sense? See, God didn't want us just to be the church in a building. That's where we screwed up. God wants us to be the church out there. 
and too long we separated Christianity on Sunday mornings and Christianity on Monday mornings. Come on. And it's not separated. They're the same thing. See, when they're in the, in the Old Testament, the phrase, the Lord's anointed, God's anointed, my anointed, your anointed, his anointed, they're all used for Saul, Solomon, and David. You, you see those phrases throughout the Old Testament. And, 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 and the thing about it was, is that Saul was anointed and remained God's anointed as long as he was building God's kingdom. Come on. But soon as Saul started building his own kingdom, the anointing was off his life. And God went and found David and anointed him to be king. And there in the and you see in the old test you see that there is a there's a ordinary material anointing. It is like when the, the uh, woman came in, Jesus was reclining at the table, and she anointed his head with perfume. See, there's a material anointing, an ordinary anointing. And then there's the uh, official anointing. There's the official anointing of kings, prophets, and, and priests. See, there was those anointings. So there was that, uh, that official anointing. Then there was a ecclesiastical anointing for the sick and for the afflicted. All through the Old Testament you see that. Then you see it in the New Testament. Jesus shows up and said, The anointing, I have been, I'm the anointed. I'm the ordinary. Come on. I'm the official. And I'm the one for the afflicted. Come on. See, Jesus fulfilled that in their hearing. I am, and then he gave that to us. Now you go and proclaim this, that I came for the ordinary, for the afflicted. Come on. See, that's good news. That's physically and that's spiritually. God never wanted us to come to Christ and believe in him and still be afflicted and struggling. One of the most surprising things to me when I began to go and speak in churches is how many people would come to church and they would sit there afflicted and afflip, afflicted. Nobody dealt with, uh, uh, with the hurting people who would come Sunday after Sunday and nobody would minister to that hurt. And the enemy would just hold them bound. I remember being in a, in a, a Baptist church and, and, and getting a word that there's a woman that's been molested. Half the church was, oh my God. And the, and the other was like, what? And then the one lady was like, whoa, set free. The kid being abused. See, nobody, nobody was saying, he come. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the afflicted inwardly and outwardly. Binding up the brokenhearted. Come on. Liberty County, it is amazing. Look up Liberty County on how many people been molested in Liberty County and the abusers that live here. Megan could probably tell you. She worked with the, the group here in town, Bridgehaven. Come on, these are subjects we don't want to dibble dabble into, but we got to because there's people who are brokenhearted and they're bound up by an enemy that needs to be exposed. And when we don't expose it, they... It, There's nothing wrong with talking about those that, come on. 
God wants them set free, not to just come and sit in church and be afflicted for years just waiting to go to heaven. Come on, is it y'all with me? For these gifts to fulfill the purpose of God for which we've been gifted has to have the anointing of God. In other words, we have to understand our why. See, you, everybody's what is different, but the why is the same to fulfill the purpose of God. There's things that we're all differently gifted in, and God will use that to fulfill and to advance the kingdom of God. In the New Testament, all who are Christ's disciples are said to be anointed. They are all God's very own, set apart, and commissioned for service. See, and Jesus said, go make disciples. And when we go make disciples, what we're saying is, look, you're now anointed. You're going to be anointed. You've got gifts. You're going to be anointed for a specific service for the kingdom of God to fulfill that purpose. Everybody in here, every person in here, whether it's business, whether it's at school, whether it's just seeing somebody, come on, our everyday life, God wants to anoint your everyday life. Being a mother, being a father, ask God, God, I need to be anointed. You, you need to be anointed to raise kids nowadays. <laughs> I'm just telling you, they're faced with so much right now. You've you got to be anointed. Because, listen, those children are the next generation of the church. And they need, to, they need to have their eyes on the right way from the very beginning. Come on. Second Corinthians 21, it says, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God. See, God's the one that anoints us. It's his. Anointing is from God, and we can't interfere in God's work because the anointed is for kingdom business, and it accomplishes God's purpose. So we need to be more aware of the difference in the gifts and the anointing. Mark 6, 13. And they were casting out many demons and were anointed, anointing with oil many sick people and healing them. Talking about the disciples. Now look in Luke chapter 10. We'll start in verse 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, 70 of them. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons were subject to and that word subject means put under obedience. Come on, man. That cracks me up. These suckers have been running rampant. What, and here's the deal. When Jesus walked in the synagogue, it said there was a woman bowed down 18 years from a spirit. He's seen it on her. She was afflicted for 18 years right in the middle of church. And nobody did nothing about it. That's sad to me. See, we get, we get so far off course, we can't even recognize So these 70 come back and they said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I, have, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. 
Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And then if you didn't get the analogy right there, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall injure you. Injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. In other words, don't get all... Because we do that. Ooh, look what we did. No, y'all didn't do nothing. You went out in the name of Jesus. Come on. And everything was subject to that because he's the head of the body of Christ. And that's the course correction. It's his head over the body that anoints us to go out and tread upon the enemy's camp to expose, come on, and that's what they were doing. They went, they went out and exposed the work of the devil. And as it was being exposed, Jesus is watching Satan go, hey, what's going on here? How did I miss the Christ? How did I miss the Messiah? How did I miss the anointed one? I've been trying to kill all the firstborn. Come on. The devil knew he was coming. He just didn't know where. Why? Because God would hide the seed in Rahab, a harlot. God would hide the seed, come on, in a Moabite woman. God kept hiding the seed. God can do whatever God wants to do. God hid the seed of the Son of Man in some of the most likely places. And now he shows up in the devil's light, it's, he's here. Boys, our days are numbered. Look, he's already given them. He's already anointed them to bind up the brokenhearted. He's already anointed them to set captives free. We had that woman bound. Come on, how did we get, how did we deviate so far off course that we can't even see what's going on spiritually anymore? And we've just made this whole thing about going, saying a prayer, going to heaven. And then we wonder why, oh, well, we come to church and we just say, oh, well. come on, you want this house to erupt in praise? You leave here and you go start casting out demons. You leave here and go start laying hands on the sick. You leave here and start telling people they've been pardoned of all their sin. You leave here. Come on. You leave here and do the gospel. And you'll make my job a lot easier. Because what we'll do is come in here and we'll just have one praise session of how awesome God is. Because you proclaimed the gospel. Because the anointing was on you in the duck blind. The anointing was on you in the grocery store. The anointing was on you at the bull riding. The anointing was on you in your store. The anointing was on you on the CB in the truck. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? There's no boundaries to the Holy Spirit. He said, I've come to proclaim release to the captives. Come on, you leave here under the anointing and the power and authority of the kingdom of heaven. Let's bring the anointing back and let's watch what happens in the house. You're all gifted. Everybody in here has a gift. Now leave here in the anointing of it for God's purpose. Come on, is anybody here? Come on, does anybody want to see it?
desperate to see God. We have a society that's desperate to see God. You want to know how to, to get rid of the political unrest? You leave here in the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. And you watch gender confusion fall off. You watch. Come on. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, now you go. You go and tell them. You go and tell them. No more guilt, no more condemnation. Listen, and there's somebody here. You need to hear that you're pardoned from your past and the guilt of it. Because the devil's been riding roughshod over you. Come on, y'all stand to your feet. Come on, the devil's been riding roughshod over you. It's long enough. Come on, who is that in here? It's long enough. Tell him, it's long enough. You know what your past is? It's that he died for you. To set you free. To pardon you. You're free. You're free. Not only are you free to move about, Flint, but you're pardoned. He doesn't even hold it against you. The devil just tries to lie to us and tell us. God doesn't even hold it against you. He just says, now go. Go lay hands on the sick. Go cast out demons. All those who are afflicted around you. Come on. Come on, you leave here. You leave here. In the power and the authority to bring thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. You don't have to go to seminary. You don't have to be, come on. God wants you. He's anointed you right where you're at. Father, I come to you and I thank you today. We leave here in the anointing and the power to change people's life that have been in bondage to sin and been afflicted. That's the gospel. Lord, let us proclaim that loudly with confidence that the promises of God are yes and our amen that we can possess and take now father we pray tonight as our community comes as our community comes together tonight I pray that we come as one unified body to worship you. Lord, that your presence be here amongst us. 
just like the cloud. Lord, we want to do tonight with you. Our community, Liberty County, needs you to tear down the stronghold that's been wrecking families in this community. Lord, we serve notice that tonight we come as one unified body of believers to lift your holy name, to proclaim release to the captives, liberty to the prisoners. Lord, we thank you and we praise you ahead of time for the move, the move that we're going to see tonight. God, I thank you and I praise you. I praise you for what's going to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's good. That's right. Man, that's good, Chad. Good. Man, that's good. <laughs> 